inside this little box here is my Xgeku T48 Universal Programmer. And boy, is this a clever little thing. This unit is capable of programming over 34,000 different programmable ICs. And apparently that list is growing every day with updates. Now, for a while I was put off buying one of these, not because I didn't want one, but because I thought it'd be quite complicated to use. So in this video, as well as unboxing it and showing you the unit, I'm going to take you through step by step how to start programming your ICs. So hopefully it'll find it a little bit less daunting when you finally pull the trigger and get yourself one. I'll also take you through some of the bonus features of this unit, which I didn't even know it did. So before we get started, a quick thank you to the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. Not only do they do beautiful PCBs like this selection here from as little as $5, they have a super simple ordering process too. And every order they check before they manufacture it to make sure that it's going to work. But they don't just do PCBs, they do 3D printing and CNC machining. So check them out, there's a link in the description. So let's get the box open and show you what we get for our money. And it's... Well, it's not a great deal, really. We've got USB cable, and the box is falling apart, and we've got the device itself. And in terms of instructions, there isn't any, really, other than to download the software from xgeku.com and to make sure you use the original USB cable, which I'm guessing the USB cable is, is a higher power type cable, and so you probably want to stick with that. So let's put the USB cable to side and let's get the unit out. So the unit itself is, it feels pretty well made to be fair. It seems, uh, it seems of good quality. We've got the zero, inf zero insertion force socket on the top, the ZIF socket. Little lever there to open and close to fasten your chip into place. We've got a power light and we've got an activity light as well. Looking around the side then, we've got a USB type B connector, which is familiar perhaps if, uh, if you've ever connected up a printer via USB, they tend to use those. And on the other side, we've got uh, another connector, which I believe is used for using the external chip connector. So rather than using the, the ZIF socket, some chips you wouldn't be using that. And you can connect additional adapters to plug into there to connect more exotic type chips. Now, just looking at the top of this, there's also a marking as to the orientation for fitting the chips. And you've got the dimple to this side. So Using this as an example, uh, we've got the dimple on the left there, which you should be able to see. So that goes furthest over, and if I open it up, and that should hopefully more or less just drop in. There we go, that's it nice and tight. So that's the orientation that you want it to be. Dimple to the left, and the chip as far to the left as possible. Then obviously, once you've got it secured, you'll lock it into place with the lever, which holds the chip very snug indeed. But before we start getting the USB cable attached and plugged into a computer, we are going to want to install the software first. Now, once you've got the software installed, it should look something like this although I have been using it, so yours might look slightly different. But you will see, <clears throat> you will see here that it says uh, programmer not found, because obviously we've not plugged it in yet. And then there's a summary on the right hand side as to what's happening with the machine. So the next thing to do is to get the programmer connected. So we can see now, looking back at the programmer, 
we can just close this because it's detected now that the programmer is present. So hopefully you will be seeing something similar to this too. Now in this video, I'm going to program a couple of these EEPROMs, which I'm then going to use in the BBC Micro. And just in case you're not familiar with EEPROMs, they're erasable programmable read-only memory. And they have these funky little windows in them. And once you program them, you'd want to cover that window up. We well, could cover the window up now, uh, really. Makes, makes no difference. But the purpose of the window is that you can rearrange these chips at a later date and put something new on it should you wish to do so. And you do that by uh, exposing them to UV light and that erases everything from them so you can start again from scratch. I just thought I'd mention that as um, that little window is peculiar to the EEPROMs. So that's, uh, that's what they're there for. So before we go back to the software, the first thing that we want to do is identify exactly which chip we have. And there is writing on these chips. And if I move over to the microscope, you should be able to see uh, exactly what's written on there. And we'll be using that information to tell the Xgecko software what chip we are connecting up to it and wanting to program. So the next thing you're going to want to do is tell the software what chip you want to program. So if we select IC and we start typing in that chip number, so that's M27C256B, obviously you'll be typing in something different. We're just going to identify it. Now, it's not a PLCC chip, it is a DIP28 chip. So we will select that. And then that's it, selected. If you want to see any info on the chip that you've got selected, uh, the generic info that is, and there you can see we've got manufacturer SC, there's the chip number. It's uh, a DIP28 package and it's a 32K EEPROM, and then it shows you how it should be orientated in the adapter itself. So that might be useful depending on what chip you're using. Next thing we'll do, we shall load the ROM image that we're wanting to use. And here we've got some options and I think the most relevant one and perhaps most useful one is we can change the address where it starts at. And for me, I'm going to use the default option, which is uh, right at the very beginning. Uh, and then I'm going to change it and I'll explain why in a little bit. But first, we're just going to load in the ROM image. Let's go for Chucky Egg. So let's open that. And we've got a clear buffer with default. So that will, anything that's in there, will clear it when it loads the image in, which is what we want. And there we go. We have got the ROM image loaded in to the software. Now, one thing that's peculiar about the BBC is it would normally use a 16K ROM chip, uh, but I have got 32K ROM chips. And the unusual thing about the BBC is it reads it from halfway through. And I don't understand enough about the BBC to explain why it does that. So what it means is that if I try using this ROM with it just um, in the first half, so the first 16K of the chip, um, unless I make modifications to the inside of the BBC, then it won't see the first half because it's expecting the 16K chip. So what we'll do is we'll load in a second image 
and this is where I said before uh, you can change where it loads in so if I change that to 4000 which is halfway through this chip this is at the 16k mark and we'll just browse we don't want to clear the buffer this time so we'll disable that because otherwise it'll wipe out the first bit and we'll just load in Chucky again so if I OK that so this is probably something you would never need to do you just load it straight in at the beginning but if for any reason you need to load uh, software in from anywhere other than the beginning that is how you do it so if we scroll down to address 4000 you will see we've got another copy there now because we changed that value as to where to load it into so there we go right next thing we need to look at is the options that we've got here PID detect obviously is as the name would suggest it detects that the correct pins are present where they should be a verify after does exactly what it says once it's written to the ROM it will double check it skip blank just speeds up the writing process where it doesn't uh, doesn't write anywhere that's blank because uh, it shouldn't need to if the chip's blank blank check we will select it will check the ROM image and make it will check the ROM chip I should say and make sure that the ROM is indeed blank before it starts to write check ID is something that I'm going to turn off because this has been giving me errors check ID is another way of the software speaking to the chip and verifying that it is the correct chip by default I would suggest you leave it on uh, but for these chips that I'm using, I'm going to turn that check ID off because I get errors when it checks the chip. Now, that might be because the chips that I'm using are counterfeit or whatever, but it doesn't work for me. But I would suggest in the first instance, you leave this checked. Um, but I'm going to turn that off for, for reasons I explained. Now... The address range is something where you can use to just write to a specific area of the chip or, or just read from it. But seeing as I want to program all of it, I will have all selected. So that's those options. Other thing you might want to consider looking at is the voltage settings. Now, I'm not going to mess with these. Uh, but you might need to, depending on what chip you're using. So by all means, I would suggest consulting with the specs of the chip that you're going to program and making sure that these settings are indeed correct. But it's not something that I'm going to be messing with, but it's something that you may need to check out just to make sure that the software is configured correctly for the chip that you're going to program. Likewise, I am not going to mess with the default current settings. Um, I don't know what difference that would make, but it's something that why change something if it works? And I have found that leaving everything default works fine for me. But that's just something to be perhaps aware of. So next thing to do is to program it. And we have a little program button up there, which we will select. And it's showing, it's showing uh, the chip orientation. I've already got the chip installed in the programmer. Obviously make sure when you put your chip in, like what I have there, that the lever's down, locking it into place. And then we can just click on program. All being well, this should then program your chip. And there it goes, doing its stuff. And as you can see, it's gone through the verifying process and everything's come back as fine. 
So in theory, that is the chip programmed. If we clear the buffers, so all this stuff here, so if we clear all the buffers, then let's read this chip in and see what it does. And if we get rid of that, we can see that we've got two, two copies, as expected, on the ROM chip of Chucky Egg. So let's stick it in the BBC and see if the BBC is happy with it. Once again, making sure we keep that dimple to the top. So pin one to the top left. Oops, turn the machine off. That helps. Really, Simon. Right, that's that ROM in. So now we should have Chucky Egg. Star ROMs. Now we've got Chucky. So it's Star Chucky. Well, there we go. So one of its party pieces, which I wasn't aware of, is that you can test logic chips with it. And here I've got a selection that I've pulled from uh, previous previous jobs on, on old Spectrums. These are uh, 74LS157s. Now, I thought they were all good, but with this little device, you can also test it, which we'll do now. So let's, let's bob one in. Right to the front. Remember to get the little thing up at the top there. And we'll shut the gate. We'll go over to the software and see the little symbol up at the top there, the A, B and the Y. If we click on that, right, let's click on auto find, see if you can find the chip. And it's found it. It's a 74157, as we said. Now, if I go back, because I don't know how else to do it, and click on test. Oops, selected the wrong chip. I need to go 74157. So that's it selected up at the top. And if I test that now, and it's all good. So let's swap this out for one of the other ones. And I think the other three are dead. So let's test that one. Yeah, so some of it's working, some of it isn't. So that's for the scrap bin. Uh, didn't need to keep that chip in my collection. Let's test another one. And that's completely dead. And the last one. And that's also completely dead. So one out of the three, one out of the four is good. So that one's going back in my collection of chips. And the rest of these are going straight in the bin. So a really nice bonus that this machine can uh, test any logic chips that you've got. So I've been a busy bee and I've done quite a few more ROMs for the BBC, which will feature in an upcoming video where I do a bit of another upgrade on the BBC. So I hope you found that useful. Thank you for watching, and I hope I will see you again very soon. Bye for now.